What am I looking at, Mo? That. Oh, it's a red wasp. Yeah. Oh. So what are you out here doing to help Mama? Holy. What yeah. happened? It got in the water hose. Oh, so. I need to get it out is what I need to do. You need to get it out? Yes. Well, why are we filling it up? Tell our friends what we're out here doing. Filling the water buckets up. And what does that do? Help, help, I don't know. Water the plants? Yeah. And this thing is clearly still alive. See? What other plant are you going to move to after this bucket's full? That one, which I'm going to do later because I'm sweating. Oh, because you're sweating? But you've this already is... done five. Yeah. So you've done good. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick this up very well, but I'm gonna go slow. And you'll see green rings. Everywhere there is a green ring, that is because we are trying to keep our fruit trees alive. And as Mo was showing you at the beginning, this is how we're doing it. We're filling up our mineral uh, tubs from the garden and filling them up, which is 25 gallons, and letting them slow drip to our plants. Guys, they have taken a almost a heat stroke. But look at this. Everywhere you see brown, everything is dead, scorched. It's been over two months since we've seen rain. Happy Monday morning, y'all. It's Lippy. I came out to really assess the garden and all, because y'all know I've been down, and Mr. Buddy has been amazing tending to it for me. Because this really is, well, it's our garden, but this is my happy place. I'm pretty much in control of the garden and you know what goes into it but he is a superb gardener as well but it feels good to sit here and look around and y'all triple digits for a couple of months and that's the only thing we're doing is trying to keep berries and fruit trees alive and him after work or come on the weekends in this heat he has kept what we have going alive and let me show y'all. Okay, down here, I do have a loquat that is surviving. We do have some strawberry starts that he had taken off. The back ends are not looking too good, but I do see some green. We're just trying to keep them alive till they get to their permanent place. And that's not gonna be till the end of October. Over here, Mo is digging in the fig trees. Yeah. Like fig newtons, but it's It's like not. fig newtons, but it's no. not. No. But that's how you make fig newtons, right? Yeah. Look at that little fig. But guys, they have truly, truly outshined themselves. Now, as we go further down, you'll see more fruit trees. You'll see some loquats in here. And then this is what he marked brown turkey. Here is the black missions. I don't know if you can see for the sun. Here is the Celeste, but I just noticed something that I need to let him know. This has got to come out. It's, uh, it's got to get moved out of the sun. It's just way too much. And these are all different trees from fruit trees to pollinatings um, that he has grafted from different neighbors, I'd say in the last year, and flourishing. All we're trying to do is just water and keep them alive, guys. Now, if we zoom down in here, oh, I got my work cut out. Look at all them aloe vera pups. They're going to have to be transplanted. Can you? Use this stuff as medicine and... What'd you say, what'd you say, Mo? 
think you use this for our sunburns. Yep, that's what I use for sunburns. You're exactly right. This aloe vera is doing good, but there again, aloe veras are more tropical. They prefer drier soil, and they like the heat, guys. You'll see we have a bucket here that we've got to fill. This is one of our satsumers. Here's our other satsumer. It is loaded. With lemons. No, this is with oranges. The lemons yeah. is on the patio. Yeah. And we've got to fill this bucket, and we're doing this every day, guys. It takes all day into the evening. This is what we're doing for the strawberry plants. We've got the shade, a piece of shade cloth on them, and I don't know if you can see. They're beautiful and green. Now, we did, um, I believe it was the end of July, that right before my surgery, I came out and we gave them a haircut. But this is how we're trying to keep them all alive until late fall. I'm letting all the... Uh, Jalapenos just sit here. You know, if they turn red, great. If they don't, hey, we're done. We're done. But it's just too hot out here to, to get all this mess out. But was able to get all of this cleaned out, y'all. It fell. Is, it, that, is that a good one? Yep, that's a good pepper. Now, as you can see from this angle, the garden has been emptied. Oh, my gosh. When we do this? July? Yeah, that's the first of July, I think. And like I said, I don't leave things. I take it out, we remove it from the space, and now it rests until late fall. But this is just a little walk. And actually, you're walking and seeing the same time I'm walking and seeing my garden for the first shot? time in um, 10 days, guys, 11 days. It's very bare, but that is what it's supposed to be. We're going to try to get to the uh, to the shade. Now you'll see our water lines are sitting here, and you see that ground cover. It's been laid this far. We are actually extending it past the blackberries. But as you can see, we're watering these blackberries. That's why you see a lot of grass and weeds, and that's fine too. If you look down here, you'll see soaker hoses. That we have stretched web. across. And yeah, we gotta. Web. We'll get the spider web. Yeah. But guys, these things are struggling. They're about to burn up. Right up. Well, Mo's gonna get a red pepper. So, let me see. What about our poblanos? Oh, I actually. See, oh, I see quite a few poblanos. Look, guys. Look at that. No, they're not quite. Mama wants them a little bit bigger. But if you notice. They're all in the shade. That thing is loaded in poblanos. As far as you can see, uh, oh, did you get you a cayenne, Mo? Yeah. Good it, deal. It's a little bit green right there. What'd you say? It's a little bit green right Yeah, that's here. fine. We can still use it. Yeah. Now, here is Mr. Buddy's peppers. And for the life of me, I cannot remember what he called these. I really don't remember, guys. Um... But he's doing a lot of Are harvesting. They, supposed to be green? they go green to red. Here's a great example. They grow like through the top of the stem. I'll get that one. But I don't, like I said, that, I don't know. That one's ready. Well, I wouldn't pick it in the middle of the day. We have to pick this late in the evening. But the, his peppers are doing good. There again, they like the heat. But at least we got this one. Oh, look at this cluster, guys. I don't know if y'all can see. Well, I can't see two. hardly. Let me three. see. Look at that. Look at these three that are almost ready. Cool looking plant. Dine and Scuppanons. Grayson ate him a few last night. Wow. And as you can see, all the green weed here, there again, that's why we are, we're watering and you can see the evidence of that. Because if we scan here, you get past the, the rain line, it's dead guys. But he actually managed to get his oh, post in on each end. Oh, a flying locust. A flying locust. He managed to get his um, cross beams in a week ago and yeah, concreted. So it's going to make it a lot easier when he runs the uh, clothesline. But yeah, we're managing to keep them alive. And Mo wants to show you something. What you got, Mo? 
Oh, you've got a muscadine. Mm -hmm. We get a handful every evening. And guys, this isn't bad for our first year. Nope. Not bad. Here you go. Hold it for my mom. Thank you. We're going to walk up here to the shade. But I want you to see how crisp. Now, what you're seeing green here, that's one of our um, aerators. But guys, it is crisp. But I want you to see all of this pine straw. We should not be having pine straw dropping in August. And this doesn't happen till the fall, and I want you to look at this. And look at that giant tree. Yes, I'm gonna show them. Y'all see all this pine? As far as you can see. There's just millions. And the reason why it's dropping, because it is so dry and that these pine tree. trees are shedding their needles to try and survive. And I don't know if the camera's picking up, but it looks like a forest fire has taken place. It is, they're so brittle and so brown. I know you're probably seeing the cascade of the green with the light, but guys, it's bad. If we scan this away, you can pretty well see all the straw. Okay, we're walking up to the flower bed and you see amongst the bed, it is green because we are watering this as well. I put too much work into this not to try to keep it alive. So you're gonna see weeds and all, and that is fine with us because the purpose of this is right now not to keep it manicured, but to keep this stuff alive. Now you see this vibrant pistoporium here? Not so vibrant. Uh, okay, he's going inside y'all with his little berries. This pistoporium, I lost it. I don't understand why until you start backing up. This one actually, for whatever reason, the way the sun hits, burn it, even with the watering. But if you scan over here, shade, and look how beautiful green. One of my favorite hedges. It puts off a citrus, almost uh, between a citrus and eucalyptus smell. Pistoporiums are one of my favorites. The trumpet bush went stupid. And I planted it here. Um, I wasn't expecting it to do what it's doing. And remember, we rounded this bed out. I'm not sure where we cut off. I think I said... Let's core it, the boxwood out and see what happens. The phone went off and this temperature thing come up overheated. Now you see how long this video is because I didn't like crop much. Just that quick, guys. I know I haven't been outside 10 minutes. Now we're back in the house. That's how hot it is. Now, what made me share this Two reasons with y'all. I gotta get off my leg. And yes, I'm holding the phone. I don't have you on that little stand, so. <clears throat> Take you some Dramamine. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but, oh, this feels better. Um, what, ma ooh, what made me do this video, one, I wanted to go put my eyes and kind of get a visual of what's been going on because I haven't gone out there. Frankly, I was afraid. I mean, even though Buddy's working every day out there, it's just to get the full visual of the extreme heat that we are facing. And I wanted to share it. When my eyes were seeing it, I wanted your eyes to see it along with me. But I think if I have any advice for gardeners, when your garden season, whether that be spring, fall, your winter garden, I see a lot of folks, you know, I know you're tired, you know, and you've been harvesting and, and, you know, processing and so forth. But when garden season is over, the best thing you can do is take all that mess out, all of it out, put it over in your compost piles or whatever it is that you do with it and do that. Do yourself that favor it also eliminates the bugs. Bugs come to, I don't care if it's go on the ground, 
and it's drying out and dying, you're asking for a house for bucks. So, you know, and that way when you're getting ready for the next planning, whatever that may be, you're set and ready. All you're gonna do is amend your soil, top it off, and that's something else I noticed. We're gonna have to get a load of dirt in here because in container gardening now, in raised beds, you're gonna have a decrease in your soil because we've added a lot of natural matter last year, which was sticks and limbs and cardboard and you name it. Well, as that breaks down, it settles. So in our situation, we've got to top it all off and then we'll amend. But of course, when I get to that point, that's a couple of months away, of course, I'm going to bring you along. But yes, get it all cleaned out. Don't let it sit there because you're already gung-ho. You're ready to start the next season, whether that be fall, winter, or spring. And the last thing you want to do is have to work to clean the mess out to start back over. So everything to me looks just perfect. But I also watched Mr. Danny at Deep South Homestead this morning talking about the drought and the triple digits. And I'm going to move my hand because it's getting tired. And I was sitting there actually talking with the video, talking with him. I don't know if y'all do that. Lippy does. And I was like, yes, sir, it's here too. Yes, sir, you know, we're going through that too. So this also comes off the skirt tail of Mr. Danny because I was like, you know what? I know ours is that bad too. It has been two months since we've seen rain. We are in triple digits. There's no rain in the forecast, guys. We are in extreme drought. We're under a burn ban, which... I'm sure most everyone in the South. You got South Texas facing some hor horrific triple digits. And we're in triple digits plus the heat index. So we're in scary hard times, I'll be honest, but there's nothing you can do. But it was what he said that, you know, that clicked in my head because that's how I perceive it to be. So... And maybe a lot of you ha perceive it. We are actually in the time now to find a solution. And I loved how he placed that within the body of his conversation because he's exactly right. And I think a lot of us are practicing that. If you're not, please do. And like I said, I'm speaking behind him and he doesn't know I'm speaking behind him. But when he touched on we're in a solution mode. He could have never been so right because that's exactly what for Buddy and I, we talk about every evening. Okay, this is what we're going to plan to do. This is what we're planning to do. Now, to our advantage, we have not in-ground garden since I broke my back. And then as I learned many years ago, because we started with five-gallon buckets, guys, and they grow great. Container gardening worked for me. It worked for Mr. Buddy. Um, and then anything that went into a field, we went to two farmers. We've used them for years, and that's where we got our field peas, purple hole, our corn, our okra, things like that. And we will still do that as long as it's available. But container gardening has been something we've been doing for many years because it fell on the heels of an injury that I had. But then it also opened up my mind and my eyes was like, oh my God, this is so much easier. And, it, and what I mean by that is, it's not that it's easier for tilling and all, but it's easy to control and maintain each individual plant. If that plant has a fungus or something has happened to that plant, you can remove it out, dolly it out, get it out of the way so it doesn't harm anything else. As if you were in a field, you're digging it up, but what is in that dirt? could be the cause. Well, then it's going to cause a problem throughout. So he did touch on container gardening, and I'm here to mimic what he said. We've been container gardening since 2006, five, 2005, the year of Katrina. And so that has been, what, 15, 18 years I have container gardened. 18 years. And guys, I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to go back. Now, it was trial and error trying to learn, okay, wait a minute. How do you make them become their individual? 
You see, they're not an army at that point. They're an individual person. And that was my struggle the first year or two, but I got a handle on it, and I've learned throughout these 18 years of container garden, raised bed garden, and so forth. But yeah, this was really just a, let's see what it's like out here. And I'm looking out that window. And guys, I couldn't be more proud of how Mr. Buddy has maintained the life of all of these plants working full time and coming in because I've been down and tending to what I normally tend to and has done a phenomenal job and y'all see it with your own eyes. And I also wanted to come on the heels of what Mr. Danny spoke about. And he is absolutely right. We are in solution mode. So tomorrow's gonna be a fun day and feels good for Lippy to be back. I still cannot stand for a lengthy amount of time so tomorrow's video, we'll do a segment, and of course I'll pause it, let my leg rest in between stages, because there's gonna be stages to this recipe that I'm sharing. And yeah, baby steps every day, and I'm doing better and better, but it let me know yesterday I was on my leg a little bit too long, and so Mr. Buddy didn't get to do his filming because there was no way I could get out there. The knee was the size of a basketball, but I, I put it to the test, y'all, and it let me know don't do that again, Lippy. That was stupid. <laughs> so, as always, stay safe, stay well, and God bless. And I'm sweating. Like I said, my hair is wet. And no, I didn't just get out of a shower. I'm talking about I am drenched, guys. <laughs> See y'all on the next one. Bye.